Welcome to Lyrically Speaking with Barry Miller and Friends, where music meets the spoken word. On tonight's show, Angela Pruitt, Brother Jamel, Scott Kessner, Julie Bemis, Ganu, Joshua, Eric Haber, Nick Tay, Thea Manye, Reverend Dave Willer, and the band Driving Words. And now, your host, that atmospheric outlaw himself, Barry Miller! Welcome to Lyrically Speaking, where music meets the spoken word. I'm Barry Miller, and these gentlemen, and I use that term lightly, because I know these guys. These guys are the soundtrack of the L.A. poetry scene, our band, Driving Words. <laughs> Chaz, Nick Tate, A-Rock, Reverend Dave Wheeler. Now, each week, we here at Lyrically Speaking are going to be bringing you the most dynamic spoken word artists in the nation. Poets who will lay down the funny, the tragic, the cosmic, and you all been to a poetry reading, you know, that, that the good old, what the hell is that guy talking about? <laughs> you, you, you've heard that before. Now, tonight we've got a lineup that could be considered dangerously cool. We've got Angela Pruitt. <laughs> Brother Jamel. <laughs> Scott Kessner. Joshua and Gnu, Eric Haber, Thea Monnier, The Tank, Reverend Dave. All right. So we're going to have a good time. Now, before we get started, I got a little story I got to tell you. And uh, in order to um, get a good handle on the tirade I'm about to go on, uh, I got to introduce to you my, my girl of about 12 years now, I guess. Uh, and w when I bring her out, you're, you're going to think I'm showing off, but I'm not. When you get a load of her, you're going to ask yourself, what the hell is she doing with him? But <laughs> the reason I'm doing this, well, you'll, you'll see later on. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Wanda. <laughs> you can go. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, this is what happened. All this past year, I've been lucky enough to uh, co-host a great spoken word program at the, uh, the comedy store in Hollywood with Ronnie Walter. And it's right there uh, on the Sunset Boulevard, right across from uh, the House of Blues. Now, a couple months ago, Wanda and I got there early. And the comedy store has this great patio set up where you can sit there right on uh, Sunset. Yeah, so Wanda and I are sitting there on Sunset. We're uh, counting yuppies, uh, counting tourists, waiting for Ronnie. When I get this feeling, somebody's watching me. Honey, what does a doctor call it when I get those eyeballs in the back of my head? Paranoia. All right, I got a big wave of this paranoia thing, right? And I look down the, uh, I look down the street, down Sunset, and I see this... Uh, this tourist looking guy, gotta be from someplace like dumb fuck Arkansas or something. He's bopping along. Beeline and it's straight for me. So I look back down at my sports page and try to be invisible. And I'm, a couple seconds later, I look up and he's right on top of me. I'm thinking, what the hell are you looking at? Now, as God is my witness. Don't you love when people say that? As God is my witness. I mean, you can't find a more credible witness than God. But we never get to interrogate God to find out if this guy's not full of shit. Wouldn't you love to do that one time? Mr. God, where were you on the evening of April 23rd, 2003? Let me see. Everywhere. Anyway, as God and Juan as my witness, this guy looks me straight in the eye and he says, Had it, Mr. Carlin. Then he looks at uh, Wanda and says, Had it, Mrs. Carlin. Then he keeps bopping up a uh, sunset without breaking stride. Now, you might want to turn his monitor around here for the people at home, or rather, people here in, the, in a set, because I'm going somewhere with this. I don't know where. Anyway, I get this a lot. I, I figured it out. I'm sitting there on sunset in Hollywood, 
in front of the comedy store, and this fucking cracker thinks I'm George fucking Carlin. Like I said, I get this a lot, and if you look at the monitor, you'll see what I mean. Now here's the thing. This guy's gonna go back to dumb fuck Arkansas, and all his dumb fuck Arkansas friends are gonna come up and say, hey Merle, see any celebrities way out there in Hollywood? I sure did. I saw George Carlin sitting right there on the Sunset Strip. You did not did. And you know what? He's married to a color girl. <laughs> and lately, since I've gotten older, more and more people have been telling me I look like Willie Nelson. Now, I love Willie. He's a goddamn legend, belongs up on Mount Rushmore, but the guy just turned 70 years old. I'm only 44! Married guys, try complimenting your wife sometime by telling her she looks just like a walking, talking fossil. Do I look fat in this? No, matter of fact, you look just like uh, Barbara Bush. <laughs> anyway, enough of my problems. And by the way, I, I love Barbara Bush, too. Her son's got me a little pissed off, but uh, Barbara's fine. <laughs> Listen, our first performer tonight, if I seem a little jumpy today, it's because I rode in with her today. And you'll see what I mean when she gets up here. Uh, Angela Pruitt is a poet and comedian who's been off the scene for about two years now. Get ready to do some carpooling, L.A. style. So strap on your helmets and buckle up and get ready for a little bit of road rage. Now, I need a little help here. Props, Tim, help me out here, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim. He's union, guess what he gets an hour to do that? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from where she lives, Angela Pruitt. Please. 
One for going, the other one for coming back. I need to get to work, shit. I need to get back on this track. Shit. Thank, thank you. Yeah, fuck you too. Have a nice day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Damn, damn, I'm late. I got five minutes. Get my ass in this parking lot. Oh, 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 that cold plate. God, God damn, fast distance. Stole my spot. Oh, uh, 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 oh, shit. Damn, hell. Oh, damn. Okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I promise. I'm gonna stop all this cussing. Yes, I do. I said I was gonna stop cussing so much that don't make no sense. I know the night when I pray I'm have to repent. I'm gonna stop all sick. Uh-uh. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> There goes Tim again. Hey, Angela Pruitt. She makes a, a great uh, case for public transportation, isn't she? All right. Hey, I first laid ears on our next uh, artist uh, at a poetry slam in Venice uh, about a year ago. And when he finished, I said, I, I caught him outside. And I said, man, that thing was epic. What was, it, what was the title of that thing again? And he said, uh, Reflections. And I said, Rejections? Sorry, son. That, that title's taken as the uh, title of my autobiography, so you're going to have to change. He said, no, man, Reflections. I said, oh. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, to give you some reflections here, Brother Jamel. I caught a vision of chilling on the west coast of the motherland when I was African, not an American, just chilling with my mans, my sisters, and my brethren, left over right, right hand, clean left hand. There was no capitalism attacking my wisdom and placing my people in prison. There was no electric chairs, pornography or disrespecting our women. There were no relaxers in our hair and no straightening combs. No such things as parents that didn't care and no hating in our homes. It took a village to raise a child. Then we placed that child in the wild to get a sense of nature, self-development and style. With beads on our neck and loincloth on our Johnson Respect for all life is the way we kept our calm, son Believing in God and all that is God While the sun, moon, and stars provided us all with the same laws That would lead, guide, and govern us With our seeds, brides, and everyone kin to us To instill and fulfill God's righteous love in us I'm having reflections of Reflections of an indigenous man Living righteous and tribal Developing heaven without the use of disciples and Bibles All those spiritual rituals were vital to the survival of our civilization Ain't no trivialization in my jubilation While Masai and Zulu are the mothers and forgotten fathers of many nations' lives, hearts, and foundations. We can't forget the Nubians. They got their sounds of blackness to help you represent the crew you in. It's an untaught education in most schools you in, because they don't want to clue you in. That would be them ruining the red, white, and blue you in. But the moment that we begin being true beings, the suing begin with them throwing the book at us to do us in. And that is not my culture. We had honor amongst tribes amongst men that fail to coincide with modern day times and trends now our timeline display traces of dismay through hate crimes meant to demoralize the mind divide the divine so through the mirror of my mind time after time I have reflections of reflections of reflections of 
the ultimate Afrocentrism without political division justice for all was always practiced and given righteous living kept competition to a minimal no tolerance for crime and criminals was an everyday general principle some places molesters and rapists lost their genitals sipping unpolluted rivers provided our physicals with essential minerals long before the belief that the police made the streets safer the creator created man and woman to complement his nature had us feeling greater and fit to run through the serengeti without a pistol or machete in our journey kits just a spear and a shield my ears and eyes tuned to the sounds of the field where I yield, collect my thoughts, meditate then build but only through reflections and daydreams cause in all actuality, murder, injustice, assault and battery is my everyday reality we got punching clocks, televised lies, assembly lines or reassembly minds putting us all in check Making it hard for all of us to reflect So through the mirror of my mind Time after time I have reflections Through the mirror of my mind Time after time I have reflections Through the mirror of my mind Time after time I have reflections of The way life used to be Reflections of The life you took from me Reflections of peace. Thank you. Brother Jamal. That's my boy. All right. You having a good time? All right. Well, enjoy it while you can because we got a problem. I just got a note backstage. Uh, it's, it's in the form of a complaint. Uh, this is from... Uh, Wanda just handed me this. This is from a Gretchen Whitehead, president of the Two-Step-in-the-Spirit Pedestrian Baptist League for Anally Retentive Soccer Moms. <laughs> and it reads, Mr. Miller, that's me, as president and spokesperson for the T-S-I-T-S-P-B-L-A-R-S-M... <laughs> I'm very disappointed and totally offended by the gratuitous use of vulgar and profane language by you and your fellow entertainers, you in particular. <laughs> and your flippant freedom with the unholy F word is especially disturbing to say the least. In view of today's national climate of patriotism, I find this gutter language to be un-American, un-Christian, and extremely dangerous to our country's young people and tender-headed adults. <laughs> Clean it up, Mr. Miller. We know where you live. God bless America, Gretchen Whitehead. Well, Mrs. Uh, Whitehead, I got to go along with you on this tender-headed thing uh, to begin with. Uh, Chaz, uh, one of our drummers, now this is a church-going brother, hadn't sworn in 20 years until he and I started working together at the comedy store, and now his mouth makes the Santa Monica Bay seem clean. <laughs> on this F-word thing now, I understand that if used improperly, the F word can fall rather harshly upon the ear, and uh, it's got all those icky sexual connotations with it. But, but did you know, Miss Whitehead, the F word has been uttered by some very great men in history and some pivotal points in history. To give you an example, uh, the mayor of Hiroshima. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it's true. Uh, General George Armstrong Custer. Where did all these fucking Indians come from? <laughs> The captain of the Titanic. What's a guy gotta do to get some more fucking ice around here? <laughs> and most recently, our current commander-in-chief, when they found out, when the press found out, rather, that uh, he had lied during the State of the Union about the weapons of mass destruction over there in Iraq, uh, an aide came to him and said, Mr. President, they found out we lied. What do we tell the people? And he said, well, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> now, from Dirty Mouse to muddy water. Uh, Scott Kessner is a beat poet and good friend of mine and football buddy. It's, you know, I want to put, it's hard to find a poet who likes football. <laughs> you know, hey man, well how about those Raiders, huh? <laughs> anyway, Scott Kessner is a beat poet and friend of mine from, uh, he, well he's the original uh, St. Louis River rat. 
Uh, he was born and raised on the banks of the muddy Mississippi, and he's here tonight to sling some Mississippi mud for you. Everybody, give a big hand for Scott Kessner. <laughs> What's up, people? What's up? Uh, this is a poem about a muddy river and a dirty man who just so happens to be me. Am I? Crooked letter, crooked letter, ah. Crooked letter, crooked letter, ah. Hump back, hump back. I was once and always will be a Saint Louis. River rat, Mississippi mud running through my veins. Perhaps that's why I'm so dirty. You see, I got a dirty mind, a dirty soul, dirty thoughts, done dirty deeds. And that makes for a dirty man Swimming in my own filth Mississippi mud running through my veins Crooked letter, crooked letter, ah. Crooked letter, crooked letter, ah. Hump back, hump back, ah. Peace. Scott Kessner. All right, Scott. Scott, sit your dirty ass down. Hey, did you ever have one of those days? Did you ever have one of those weeks? Julie Bemis and I are kindred spirits because she and I have survived a couple of one of those decades. Here to talk about that day we all hope will never come, but always seems just one day away. I'm talking about Doomsday. Julie Bemis. He said the word Doomsday. A word particular to his vocabulary, not the first time he'd spoken it. He said, it's not unusual to be on this medication six months. You can take it till doomsday. <laughs> unusual word for psychiatrists to say to a patient who worries to the point she withers away, eaten by piranha anxiety in every way. Well, is he just of a peculiar, humored state of mind? Was he joking or was he blind to say such a heavy-handed word? Doomsday. What? The apocalypse? The day on which one dies? The last judgment for us all? Till. He said, till doomsday. Now that's a different definition according to my Navy-bound Oxford. Till doomsday. It means forever. I can take this medication forever. But why not say, instead of till doomsday, something more like indefinitely or the official definition forever? Words do not carry the weighty pull of dread and angst. Words are more definitive and less emotive and impulsive. 
doomsday. Well, I was surprised nonetheless at his word full of darkness and jest. Doomsday! Perhaps old Doc has another side unseen underneath an existential bent with which I identify and find amusing. Old Doc and me, we existentialists, how Camus would be so proud of us. Till doomsday, forever it means, now I know, now I can silence my screams. Julie Bemis, Doomsday. The first time I heard that, I've known Julie a while, and we were hanging out somewhere. Let me fix this. Thing. You know, what do we pay for these things anyway? <laughs> anyway, first time, first time I heard that, I got I really ought to start weightlifting. <laughs> Work with me, people. That's what the Lefty Lucy. I used to go out with her. Actually, her brother's name was Lefty. Oh, I got it. The hell are you? Anyway. How about this band? And McTate, you gonna come up here for me, man? Ladies and gentlemen, McTate gonna lay some shit down for you. My brother. Yes, yes. In the age of the bling bling, the only thing I bling is this red and wing. So uh, this poem is dedicated to my wife and how we met. You see, I was walking down the block when I had to suddenly stop like I was summoned by the cops. You see, she reminded me of a girl who I used to like a lot. My homeboy's older sister by the name of Lisa Lot. I'm saying, oh, girl was mad hot. Plus she blew up the spot singing some Jill Scott I mean, beauty mixed with hip-hop just made my jaws drop Yo, I tried not to jock, but I just could not You see, she was better than bad, bro I mean, you do the math, yo She was eclectic and natural like Angie Stone's afro I mean, I tried to keep my feelings locked down on the low But from the time she said hello, my feelings started to flow as she spoke poetical like Maya Angelou I mean, she looked me in the eyes and my world moved slow I was like, yo, she's mad incredible As we walked and we talked for a good hour or so I mean, she touched me on the hand and said, love, I gotta go Now I know my man might be asking, did I get a number? Yo, I got the one to her home plus a cellular phone Though I was locked in a zone You see a style all her own, her essence was the presence of a Nina Simone. I said that essence was the presence of a Nina Simone. So needless to say, I couldn't wait to get home and hit her up on the phone. I was like, sweetheart, I'm saying, I like what you do. I mean, you've been all in my system like the flu. So even as I microphone check one, two, I'm thinking about you and the way you call me boo. Translated through your touch. You see, there's oh so much solace in your clutch. Plus, trust you enough to make a black man blush. You see, I'm not Bahamadia, but my dear, I confess. You the reason in summer seasons we act wild on the West. It's your style, your finesse, and that Jersey dress that puts flesh to the test. Yes, yes. <laughs> Plus, I like the way you rock hip hop in your guests, like Bonita Apple Bum from a tribe called Quest. So lay your head on my chest and lay your stress to rest. Cause with your hand in my hand, we can watch the stars and make plans. I'm saying together we'll stand woman and man. So if your life has been bleak, then I'm here to make it more better. See, we can slide down the coast in my busted ass jetta. Walk down the beach and drink some amaretta. While I keep your body warm like a cashmere sweater. You see, it's a full moon and this young cancer might sweat ya. Yes, yes, but no. I'ma keep it on the low like my flow and continue to take it slow. Cause I got much respect for you, girl. This, you have to know. Yes, this, you have to know. Peace. Oh. 
Nick Tank. Now you notice that uh, we don't have a DJ. And you're thinking, well, everybody's got a DJ nowadays. What is this guy trying to make a statement or is he just cheap? It's a little bit of both, actually. I'm cheap, but I'm trying to make a statement, too. See, me and the band, we come back, you know, we're basically 70s guys, and we come from a time when uh, human beings made music. You know, remember? You know, there was a band, you know? Now, but occasionally we do need that techno sound, you know, because we got to keep up with what's going on, you know? Or we'll be like Lawrence Welk or something, you know? But we got that covered. You see, when we need that techno sound, we go completely organic. See, we believe in human skin on animal skin, you know? Or human skin on human skin. That's called the butt bongo, but that's a different thing. <laughs> Those guys, well, never mind. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here to do some time. No, it's a, the piece is called time. No, I've done that, no. Here to do a piece called time. Ganu with our human beatbox, Joshua. Welcome to the Roxwell Writing Workshop. My name is Roxwell, rock mics a lot. And I found in a talk with cons, profound thoughts, the palms of long walks. Down a dark path being stalked by a depressed man's past Misery, cracking jokes, making him laugh He's 16, half 32, half 8 And his eyes spit in your face when you say half faith Cause all he know is drugs, prostitution, thugs Institution, no solution, popping off them slugs Uncomfortable with hugs, refuse to believe in love Cause the ones that he love can't care less what he does And it makes him feel like dirt and the cracks in the concrete Surrounded by chalk lines, drawn around a smile Killed at the age of four by the sight of a Drive by. He said it's selling crack, truly a crime, that's all I got to survive by And if so, why not cigarettes and alcohol? Hypocrites write laws to control but not abide by Why try? Nobody cares, he uttered brush in his head Glanced in my eyes, then he looked away like he's scared Kinda reminds me of dances with wolves Kevin feeding the abused canine Over time became his dog but it's hard to build trust when all your life you've been dog Standing on two, looked upon like he walking on four And we all talk against what he's got to tell He told me this, crack he living in is all he knows So why is it wrong to put the details in songs Slang his life like crack to those bored with they own If that's his only way to prevail Out of this hell hole in the concrete Busy feet walk over, spit on his neighborhood Where kids can't help but curse He said a ghetto baby's curse when it's born The punch hit me in my heart so hard Brought tears to my eyes What in the world are we doing with our lives If I'm only doing for self, I'm only living to die I see my unborn's future and a man child before me Possibility of being grandma bride I can't put off the fight, it's only cracking the night I could be indoors, focused on rocking the mic Hearing a war going on beneath the street lights I gotta run outside, build a place for us hope to reside Streets are watching, then coming and hide All this bitten youth learning, send a welcome inside Where we gotta love supreme Work Working as a team to bring kids' careers out of their dreams. I work full time, but I'm starting my business in the meantime. And in between time, instead of killing time, giving time CPR, assemblies in motion, spitting my rhyme to get in their mind and find a place for us to build. Foundation for faith to the art they relate. So I use it to put food for thought on their plate. Well, on my plate, so I'm trying to record my CD, finish my movie while pushing my books with clothing ideas, trying to perform everywhere, accelerating my career. It's truly harder than it looks. I need time. Some time to reach, some time to sleep, time to go back to school, and some time to just be. Now that I see your artist is not who I am, those are my abilities. Who I am is what I express through my artistry. A revolutionary is more than just endless complaints and wait for me to get rich. Shit, that's one thing that the revolution can't. So much to do it, not enough time. Yo, so much to do it, not enough time. So much to do it, not enough time. Kids commit and crime, not enough time, so much to do, yo, not enough time, people losing their mind, it's just not enough, yo, not enough time, nah, -uh. not enough, yo, not enough time, it's just not enough, not enough time, it's, we all out of time. What not enough? 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 
Before I say anything, I feel there's one thing I must say to get it out in the open. I don't do karate. <laughs> I just wear the pants. once gave some money to a man who had been cloned. I said, don't spend it all in two places. <laughs> the other day before my yoga class, I managed to take a moment or two to sit down in silence. I was pre-meditating. <laughs> I wanted to buy a crystal ball, but I didn't have enough money, so I had to get a crystal oval instead. <laughs> I predict that in the future, everyone's going to get shorter and fatter. <laughs> Sorry for the bad news. No. I'm a man of few words. Those few words are, I know everything. <laughs> I'm self unemployed. I used to work for the man until I shot him. <laughs> now I'm out of a job. I ran into my valley girlfriend at the Zen monastery. She said, Oh my God! A friend of mine recently said to me, said, Eric, please tell me what you're on and where I can get some. <laughs> I said, all right, let me make a few calls. I've got high friends in places, so... <laughs> I once dropped some acid. 
I never found it. <laughs> Where do jokes go after they go over your head? I'm coming out of the closet, <laughs> but I'm staying in the house. <laughs> Why do you think they call it dope? Ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful Thea Monier to perform Butterflies. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what drives a caterpillar to decide to create a cocoon so that it can hide and then emerge from it this beautiful, beautiful butterfly. But then at the same time, I feel compelled to ask God if change comes that easy, well then why couldn't I have just been born a butterfly? See, sometimes I begin to wonder things like, why do abused women stay and continuously pray for a change that will make their homes a safe place to live with men who hate them because they breathe too loudly or because they keep getting back up or because they exist and their mere existence is a constant reminder of what they lack as men. And what makes these women unpack and pack and unpack and pack and unpack and pack their bags over and over and over again? And what makes these women continue to love these men? And why do the rest of us walk around bragging about how strong we are for not being in their shoes, yet we fail to recognize how strong you've got to be to wear those shoes in the first place? And aren't they just running from the truth like the rest of us? So I ask God, why couldn't I have been born one of these women? Did you know that I would be too weak to survive or that I wouldn't be alive at this very moment to even write this poem? And why do I feel jealous of them for loving someone enough to risk being hurt? See, sometimes I wonder things like if homeless people are really talking to themselves or could they truly be talking to angels? I wonder if they can see lights and angles that my eyes can no longer even see. You see, they are completely free from those everyday things that bind me. So I hope they don't mind me eavesdropping on portions of their conversation. I'm hoping to overhear the keys to life or maybe just writing down some of their gibberish so I can take it home, decode it, and discover what is the key to their survival. Because you see, upon our arrival to this earth, not one of us is told where that next blessing would come from or where our next trial may lay. So we now pray half-hearted to a God we no longer even know. But occasionally, we will say hello to him when we see him standing on the side of street corners begging us for change. But instead of nickels and dimes, He'd much rather have a little piece of our time so he can sit down with us and explain to us why it is we weren't born butterflies or why we weren't born women who are daily battered or why it is that we even matter. You see, he came to give us change. He wants us to be able to speak in tongue with homeless angels so that we can see life in other angles besides just 90 degrees because contrary to popular belief in geometry, that angle is not always right. Sometimes I wonder why do we fight life and why do we fight love 
And why do we fight falling in love with life? I wonder who would I be if I never ever learned to write? Would I just exist creatively constipated or find another way to express myself to a world that could care less about my first name? Would I have the same powerful views on the rights of black people if I were born white or if I were raped and impregnated? Would abortion then be all right? And if I had to watch my family starving to death, would that justify my stealing? And how does the lethal injection offer families emotional healing? And how do you tell somebody you love them without exposing yourself and how you're truly feeling? Or are there just some questions in life that only get answered by you going through the actual experiences? You see, contrary to appearances, this life is just one big stage where we all walk around modeling silk cocoons to impress a room full of people who could probably care less. So why not? Just walk out there, stark naked, but with wings, exposing yourself to everything and everything to yourself with no fear of being judged for what you say or what you do. Why can't you learn to be content with being you and allow me to be me? And why can't we see that though our wings come in various shapes, sizes, colors, and patterns? We are all butterflies in the end, so in the end it doesn't even matter anymore how beautiful you think your wings are. What matters is how strong they've become from use because what is the purpose in you being a butterfly if you spend your entire life inside of a cocoon? I love it. Makes me look good, don't you? <laughs> now, I don't want you all thinking we're a bunch of decadent yahoos, even though we are. We do have religion here, at Lyrically Speaking. We've got a built-in reverend, the Reverend Dave Wheeler over here. <laughs> now, he's an actual reverend. It was a mail-order thing, but he's an actual reverend. We're thinking about starting our own church, too, because... They don't tax churches. We can raise some revenue here. Uh, what we're going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is get a little spiritual. Y'all feel a little spiritual? You feel a little spiritual? You feel like going to church? I think so. Can I hear hey from the congregation? I'm getting good at this. Ladies and gentlemen, the Reverend Dave Wheeler with some evangelical bastard. Reverend Dave! Friends? And you are my friends. I want to tell you all a little story tonight about a, a hero of mine, a veritable American icon who's built stupid America out of about three billion bucks. Mr. Jimmy Swagger. Throw the slapping words, evangelical bastard. Sweating and spitting morals you can't even keep. I'll spit back at you with the saxophone as my sign from God. Asking for no money. I'm agnostic, you see. I believe that no Bible thumping beggar, no pointed hat papers, no shaved head tambourine wielding zealot knows any more about the afterlife than me. I'm enlightened by my lack of knowledge. I admit I don't know. Pseudo-Christian creationists, they should be shot. With the dose of knowledge and morphine. The opiate so they could handle the truth. That they know less than they admit. Evangelical bastard. Let me put this over here. 
I'm going to tell you about a, a weekend. Y'all met Wanda earlier. A weekend Wanda and I spent uh, naked in public. This is called the uh, Olive Dell Nudist Ranch. In the yellow pages, I found an ad for a nearby nudist ranch. I showed my woman, said, what you think about giving this a chance? We had reached that point of middle age, kind of bored with nothing new. Said, call them on up and see just what they might require you. So I called the number inside the ad, got a woman on the line, who had a pretty voice and olive dell, and we're naked all the time. She proceeded to enlighten me about the naked paradise. Jacuzzis, pools, and cottages, you know, it sounded pretty nice. Are you on the net? I said, no, not yet. Just send it U.S. mail, because they guarantee delivery in the snow and sleet and hail. Well, it was summertime and the elements didn't slow deliver down. Sent a brochure with a map inside showing how they could be found. That weekend we packed up the car, didn't really take too much. Just a nice chest full of alcohol to the California brush. At the entrance in a little shack, a new girl with skin like leather. Said, I welcome you to Olivedale, I assume you're both together. Then we filled out all the paperwork saying that we would adhere to their naked rules and do's and don'ts for the whole time we were here. Said, go see Mike up on the hill, he'll be glad to show you around. Like the pool, jacuzzi, and hiking trails where your cottage can be found. We discovered him up on the hill, he wasn't wearing a stitch at all. And when I saw Mike, it was clear to me why going naked is against the law. He must have weighed 600 pounds, had a belly overhang. And I reckon it been quite some time since Mike had seen this thing. He reiterated a couple rules, no photos without permission. And don't go doing no kinky shit, we're okay with hugging and kissing. We found our accommodations, a little cottage in the trees. Then Mikey said, just one more thing, would you both get naked, please? Now the last time I was ordered to this robot human whale Was when a deputy inspected me in the L.A. County Jail I shrugged off that bad memory, we shrugged off all our clothes Standing buck naked next to Mike, at least I could see my toes For an instant I felt vulnerable, cause I ain't no muscle ripper If I stand sideways with my tongue stuck out, I sort of look just like a zipper My woman had no problem showing off what can't be seen Cause he looks just like a centerfold in a girly magazine Twenty people by the swimming pool, lying naked in the sun Summer splashing around on rubber rafts, playing frisbee on the run Even I showed my athletic side, playing volleyball in the nude But I spiked that ball into the balls of another naked dude Said sorry man, but I had no choice cause I always come to play He said to me in a soprano voice, I understand it, it's okay We all cut loose in our birthday suits, a little bonfire after dark All nudies laugh, but I burn my ass on a red-eyed egg with spark We carried on like jungle folk, I was tarred and she was Jane. If a kid just knew or even had a clue, he'd be certified both the same. It was sometime after midnight when I felt a naked yawn. We stole back to our cottage to await the naked dawn. In bed with her there next to me, I prayed we'd never leave. We'd grow old naked gracefully and Adam with his Eve. Good night, I whispered in her ear, then I kissed her on the nose. Then I had a nightmare about a naked world and only I was wearing clothes. I wrote that when I was younger. Where's Joshua? Where's my boy? Come here, Josh. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua. You want to give me some of that Bo Diddley? Remember how that thing goes? A little slower, please. I'm an old man. A little slower. This is a story about a girl I met a while back who was into, what do you call, uh, sexual role playing. And this is how I found out. And her name was Elegance. I just left my elegance with secrets I can't tell. She made me swear that if I did, I'd surely go to hell. She had me place my hand upon God's lengthy diary. A book she never read herself but believed in thoroughly. Now according to that diary, which by the way I've read, there's already a place for me down there when I am dead. And anyway, y'all seem to me to be the trusting kind. Combined with all my secrets, she has cluttered up my mind. We went back to her condo in her Mustang 65. -er. 
she asked if I would play the role of her designated driver. Little did I know that role would only be my first. That night I played so many roles I thought my mind would burst. Construction worker, cable guy, grocery bagger boy. Boom and God, no window washer, a quarterback named Troy. Then Fed Express and UPS and postal carrier. At one point she asked all my roles if they would marry her. Some rock star she called Lenny, then a guy from work named Earl. And finally she insisted that I dress up like a girl. Come on and I crawled out of there, not sure just who I was. My knees were weak, I couldn't speak in my ear, I heard a bug. The sun was coming up, all my energy was down. As I staggered down an alley in the costume of a clown. So now I told what elegance swore me to secrecy. And I hope that there's a second time she'll just let me be me. Thank you, Josh. All right. We're going to get out of here pretty quick. But what I want to do, catch my breath first. You guys play fast, you know that? <laughs> listen to the wave sometime or something, will you? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Y'all met Wanda earlier. And like I said, we've been together about 12 years. Now, a couple years back, uh, I was approaching our 10th anniversary, and uh, I was kind of broke, which uh, I always seem to be. <laughs> and I thought, well, I gotta get her something. You know, 10's a big one. And I never made it to 10 before. <laughs> so this is big. But I, you know, you know money, you know. I, I, I didn't have a buck 50 for Hallmark. So I thought, wait, you're a poet. Write something. Duh. <laughs> so I wrote something for her. And this is entitled, I Love You From Your Cheap Bastard. <laughs> or something. Your passionate kiss. Your loving embrace. The curves of your body. The smile on your face. A vision of beauty as you walk through the door. Been almost ten years now. Can I please have ten more? The trials we endured, the changes they came. The world was unfriendly, but we played their game. We held it together, though it was a chore. Been almost ten years now. Can I please have ten more? I'll never forget the night that we met. I was just spinning through time. On my best behavior, bumped into my savior. I knew I would soon make you mine. Your delicate voice, your flowery scent, your improvisation when the money was spent. There's no way to know, dear, what might be in store. Been almost ten years now. Could I please have ten more? Thank you. All that means is I won't be on the couch tonight, you know? <laughs> she knows. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, I want to read something to you here from my buddy Scott, who you met earlier, from his book. And I, I, I try to commit this to memory, but, you know, I'm, like I said, from the 70s, so that we're working on limited brain cells. <laughs> uh, this is from Jack Kerouac, my hero, on his definition of a poet. In his eternal search for truth, the poet is alone. He tries to be timeless in a society built on time. Well, time is something we're running out of. I want to thank y'all for coming. Did you have a good time? Yeah. All right, thank, thank the band. We got Chaz, Nick Tate, A-Rock, the Reverend Dudes. Help me out of here, guys. I want to bring everybody back here. Ladies and gentlemen, bring my cast up here. Angela Pruitt. Oh, 
Brother Jamal, Angela, get up here. Brother Jamal. Scott Kester. Julie Bebas. Ganu. Joshua, the human beat folks. Eric Haber. And our band. We'll see you next time on Lyric